So let's dive into the exciting world of Rhino Linux. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I want to do a quick distribution review of Rhino Linux. And Rhino is not your average Linux distribution. It's almost like a breath of fresh air in the Linux universe. And it's a lot of things that set Rhino Linux apart. So we all heard of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is like the most popular Linux distribution in the world. Well, Rhino Linux is built upon that solid foundation. But the twist is Rhino Linux takes a different approach by embracing the rolling release model. And most people in the Linux community have heard of rolling release uh, distributions, especially if you ran across a distribution called Orange Linux. But Ubuntu has always, you know, since the beginning, has been on a release schedule. They always ran their distributions on a release schedule. And so that's what it says Rhino Linux, you know, a port or whatever. It's going to keep you on the most up to date software and you don't have to wait for that next stable release. And so all that cutting edge software and continuous updates and improvements will be pushed out to your system as it comes out. Now, one of the really cool parts about Rhino Linux is the unicorn desktop and it's visually pleasing. And what it's based on is XFCE, which you guys, if you've been following me on YouTube, you know that I enjoy that XFCE desktop environment, which is super lightweight and known for its speed and simplicity. So that's what makes this exciting for me. Now let's hop over to the website so I can cover a little bit more about Rhino Linux and then I'll walk you guys through installing it and we'll look at the desktop environment once it's installed within a virtual machine. So let's get to it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Okay, so we're at rhinolinux.org. And so this is where you can get a copy of Rhino Linux and install it on your system. But I did a little research and I wanted to cover that the team behind Rhino Linux wanted to create a desktop environment that caters to everyone. You know, they blended the best of both worlds, the traditional and the modern into the unicorn desktop environment. And it's a perfect blend of power and user friendliness, uh, making it suitable for both seasoned Linux users and beginners alike. And you can go through and read this site. Of course, I have the link down in the description of the video, but I'll just walk you guys through downloading it. So all you have to do is uh, click here and then you can select the edition. They have a couple different editions. There's a generic OS. This covers both x86, 64, uh, and also the ORM 64, you know, version. And then there's the Pine Phone version as well as a Raspberry Pi version, which is that ORM 64. So uh, what you wanna do is just download the generic iOS. It'll bring up these two different options. Uh, and that's what I mean by the ORM. It'll bring up both of them. And this is their latest like beta. It's not a full stable version yet. It's current, they're currently on a beta and then they'll release their final version in the near future. But here you go, this is the x86-64. All you have to do is hit download right here on the link and that'll download that current latest version. And if you look on the website, there is a lot more information. There's news tab. Uh, you can check out information or follow what's actually going on. And then the wiki. So you can go through the installation guide. There is a quick start guide, post install, uh, as well as tools used in Rhino Linux, like the Rhino package manager or pack uh, style. So, and then also they cover some of the known issues right now. I think they're having an issue with upgrading uh, Rhino, you know, the package core. Uh, so you could check that out and see if that'll uh, fix whatever, you know, issue. If you already have Rhino Linux and you're trying to upgrade it, like right here, they covered it in an article, uh, beta five unicorn desktop and issues upgrading. So there is an upgrading issue 
um, and this was a couple days ago, May 17th. So definitely check that out. And then you can click on packages and I'll go through and show you guys the packages that are available to you. You can search, you know, all that good stuff there. And it kind of reminds me of Orange Linux, how they have all the packages listed on the website as well as the AUR and all that stuff. I don't think Rhino has that, but it's a rolling release. So you can download, you know, whatever new packages you want onto the system and get them up and going on the system. And just throw a little bit more information out there. You have that option when it comes to packages of whatever you want to use. So you got your dev repos, uh, pack style, flat pack, packs uh, using flat hub as well as the snap snap store and then one cool thing about it when you're doing the install it gives you the option to turn those on or not whichever one you want to use so if you want to use flat packs uh, you can turn that on it'll install all the tools that you need in order to get your flat packs installed or the snap store I believe the snap store is on by default but you have that option to you know kind of turn on what you want which is super cool. So let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine. I'll walk you guys through the install and get you guys up and going with Rhino Linux. All right, so I skipped the boot up process where you, you know, write the ISO to maybe a USB or a disk or something like that and just boot it right into the operating system. So we can go down and get to the install. And the first thing that'll pop up is the desktop environment. And you'll see on the desktop a script it basically says install Rhino Linux. So if you want to install it on your hardware or if you want to install it in a virtual machine, then this is the process that you'll follow. You just click on this script, boom. And actually, you could play around with the desktop environment if you want to. As you can see, you know, certain applications are on the distro. So you could play around it in a live environment. But we're gonna walk you guys through the install. So let's let's go down and get to it. But First thing that'll pop up is a work welcome screen. You just go down and select your language, go down and hit next. And as you can see, this is just like Ubuntu. It's not that new installer that they release, but this is the normal installer that most people know how to run through in Ubuntu. So I'm gonna quickly run through it. Uh, this is just selecting your location next, uh, your keyboard layout next. And then now this is where you set up your hard drive space or your, your disk for the operating system. And so the default is erase the disk, you know, and uh, some most people do swap the file. You can go in and manually partition and all that good stuff. Just make sure you select the right drive. Uh, if you got multiple drives in your system, just select that drive that you want to install the operating system on. And then also you had an option to encrypt and then the default master boot record will be at that location. So let's go down here next and go down and set up our account. And so let's just type Josh. And then what I'm gonna name this one is Rhino. Uh, boom. And then type in a super strong password if you plan on keeping this system, you know, around. And let's go down here next. And this is the summary, especially just summarizing everything that it's gonna do when it installs the system. So let's go down here install. And I'll be back when it finishes and we can go it on and check out the desktop environment. All right, cool. So the install is complete. Uh, only thing that's left to do is reboot the system. So let's go on and hit, hit that now by just hitting done at the beginning. Uh, and then that'll reboot the system. And I'll be back when it comes back. All right, so we are booted up into the operating system. I kind of skipped ahead because I had to fix the display settings so you guys can see everything while I'm recording. But this is the first thing that'll pop up. It's basically a setup of your system. So you can make your choices here. This is what I was talking about, how you can make choice changes to where you can view uh, flat packs or install flat packs or, you know, as far as the packages that you want to use and like the settings of the desktop environment. Let me let's go do it right fast, but let's get started. Now the color scheme. So you can go with the dark theme, which I always like dark themes, uh, but there is that light theme you can click on and that'll go through and change your system up to where you have that light theme. So let's hit next. And then this is what I was talking about package management. So flat packs and then app images, you can turn those on. Uh, Snap is on by default, uh, which is turned on in Ubuntu by default. So uh, you have that option already turned on for you, uh, but you can turn on flat packs, of course, you know, uh, flat hub repository, add that to your system. If you make those changes and let me actually add it so you guys can see, but I'm gonna add flat pack there. I'm gonna turn that on and let's go on and add uh, app images so I can show you guys but let's hit next. Now, uh, these are some extra settings right here. So Nala, 
I did a video on Nala a while back. It's super dope. It's like a front end for the app package manager. It looks a whole lot better than just running uh, pseudo apps upgrade, pseudo app update. And I'll show you guys that when we get into the terminal, I'll, I'll show you guys that as well. And then the app port, uh, this is a crash reporting system. So you can turn it on. That'll just help uh, the developers of the uh, distribution, you know, create a more stable system for you guys. So as you get updates, you know, changes will get fixed, especially if there's crashes with the system. So let's go down here next there. And like I said, it's going to authenticate because it's going to X or it's going to change, make those changes uh, to the package managers uh, out there, add them to your system so you can make change, uh, so you can install from those repositories. So scroll down and type in our pseudo password authenticate and it's going to ask you a couple times it may pop up once or twice uh i think one time i did this it, it did it twice uh and maybe it's because i typed in my password wrong but i thought it was another prompt that popped up so maybe not but it's going to make those changes to your system and i actually come back when it finishes because I, I believe it takes a little time because it has to install everything get everything configured for you so you can install those packages from there uh, and this is what I was talking about. It's going to pop up, you know, a couple of times doing this process uh, just for you to authenticate. This is working everything in the background. Now, as you can see, it's all done and we have to reboot the system. And that's because we made changes to the system um, via, you know, that setup and everything. So let's reboot and I'll come back. All right, cool. So uh, we're back into the system. It's finally done. It's set up for us. But, uh, you know, we walked through that first setup and now we're into the system. So we can actually start using it. And the first thing I kind of wanted to point out is this integrated UI launcher. That's like one of the, the dopest part of it. Uh, and this is written in Python. It's a search bar kind of pops up like that. So I'm going to just type something. As you can see, it'll find whatever based on whatever you type and it'll adjust based on that. So VS Codium, I just type C that brought up VS Codium. So it's an easy way to open up your applications on your system. You know what I'm saying? Um, that UI launcher, you know, it makes it and it's customizable. You can uh, mess around with it and, and adjust it as needed. But yeah super dope launcher that they created and included in the desktop environment now right here is your application grid so that'll open up all the applications on your system just like in ubuntu the exact same way you know you can go through all your applications any and everything that's on the system there's a whole bunch of settings uh and you can also search up here you know if you want to uh but it's super dope that that's included. Now, one of the first things you want to do is update your system. So I want to run through and show you guys Nyla, which is installed by default. So all you got to do is type it just like uh, apps, but sudo Nyla update. I'm going to just run the update command so you guys can see it run. And then I'll run through. It's probably got a bunch of updates for the system because that, that, that tend to happen most of the time because uh, it's constantly updates being pushed out to the system. Like I said, it's a rolling release. Uh, so you're going to get those packages as soon as they're released. So as you can see, 6.2 packages can be upgraded. Uh, let's go down and upgrade those in the background so you guys can kind of see, you know, Nyla in action. So let's go down and press enter. Boom. It, it, it lists out the packages for you, you know, in an easy to read way. So I, that's why I love Nala. So if I install Ubuntu, I always install Nala. That's like one of the default packages that I install because uh, it's super dope. It's super easy. You know, it lays everything out for you. That way you can get a better understanding of what's actually happening when you run these commands. That was one of my issues when I first started using Linux. I really didn't understand what was popping up in the terminal and how that worked with what i was actually doing or how what, what it was actually affecting what was it actually changing i didn't have a clear understanding of what it was actually doing well nyla kind of lays a lot of that out that's why i'm glad i you know they can someone develop this you know what i'm saying super dope application now let's go through and check out some settings let's go into our software so let's go up here and type software uh, and let's go into that little software center that's included uh, just show you guys how you can get in packages and install. Now, it won't work properly as far as if like if I tried to install something now uh, because I'm running updates via the command line. So it won't work 100% for me. I mean, it'll work mostly. You can search packages. You can look at packages. 
you know what I'm saying? You can look at the reviews. I just can't install anything until Nyla finishes because it's installing all those packages on the system. It basically locks out. So you don't accidentally corrupt the system by installing something while something else is being installed. So boom, um, this is, you know, your typical package manager, uh, typical software center. You know, it's web based. Uh, it's easy to use. Uh, you can go through and find whatever you want as far as uh, applications that you want to install on here. So this is the installed application. So if you click on that tab, hit install, that'll show you everything that's installed on the system. And then right here, the last tab is update. So right now it says it's up to date, um, but I can't even run it. I don't want to run it because it's going to say it's locked because of this uh, running in the background. But let's go back to the Explorer. But like I said, you can search. All you have to do is hit the search button up here, search for whatever applications you want. Uh, right here is the software repositories and like I said, this is just a gooey way of looking at everything You know what I'm saying? You can go through and check out everything. So you buy software other software These are the all the repositories on here. You can add and remove from here, you know, which is super cool super easy to do uh, Your updates. This is just managing that schedule uh, as far as checking for updates and you know all that good stuff and then authentication additional drivers if you want and go through there developer options let's go down and close it though we're good and it looks like our updates are finished so i'm gonna go down and uh close it out but that updated the system that's the first thing you want to do when you install any linux distribution is update the system now it's pretty much it for that um but i want to show you guys at least the system itself and let's just go to our settings uh, manager boom and this is where you go to update everything for your system you know pretty much everything any and everything you got your tweak tool in here uh, appearance you know if you want to mess around with the appearance of it they got different styles different icons different fonts and I won't go through all of that but you guys get the idea if you use the XFCE then it shouldn't be too difficult for you to manage your system using this settings manager uh, you got sessions and startups, you know, I'll, I'll, any and everything you can think of is right up in here. All right, so let's go down and close it. But if you right click on the desktop, this brings up other options as well. You can create launchers, you know, URL links, all that stuff there uh, as well. Open a new window, arrange desktop icons if you have icons on here. But one thing I want to show you guys was the desktop settings. You can go in here. You can get to that through the settings menu that we had up a few minutes ago. But I just wanted to show you guys a different way of actually getting into it. But they have some super cool backgrounds and I really like them. You know what I'm saying? Super dope. Uh, let's roll with that one for a minute. Just, you know, just show you guys, but so show you guys something different. Uh, but you got your menu options, icons, if you want to, you know, boom, good to go. And then just show you guys the desktop switcher. So let's go to open up VS Codium uh, and then let's switch to a different desktop. Uh, so bam, you can go through click on another desktop environment boom uh i really like this switcher super dope so let's say i want to go back to the one that i have vs codium on so boom you can click that and then they have options over here as well so you can click on this or this and i'll take you they'll move it to that current working uh desktop environment so like i said this is super dope you know awesome distribution a lot of things set up well for you uh, to actually, you know, use the system is very user friendly. You know what I'm saying? It's just that on that rolling release model. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And like I said, Rhino Linux, you know, brings something truly unique to the Linux community. You know, uh, being that it's rolling release as well as that unicorn desktop environment, which is based on XFCE. It's a nice new addition to the Linux world. And don't forget to visit Rhino Linux so you can explore more about the distribution. You know, you can also download the beta version for yourself and, and consider joining that ever growing community around Rhino Linux. And if you found this video informative and enjoyable, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow Linux lovers. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Linux videos and tech updates. Lastly, now remember, Linux is all about freedom, customization, and pushing boundaries. So keep exploring, keep learning, and keep embracing the power of open source software. Now, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and of course, keep it tech.